Hello. Good morning. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. Yay. I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, we'll get started with a word of prayer as soon as my noisy kids be quiet. All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together that we can come here and learn more about you and worship you, Father. Thank you for providing everything you've provided with us, Father. Uh, we are so unbelievably blessed. Um, I just pray a blessing over our, our service uh, from the beginning to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, if there are any first-time visitors here today, uh, we welcome you. If you're looking for a church home, look no further. You have found it. <laughs> um, there is a candlelit service tonight. I, I highly recommend coming to that. Uh, we, we play a few songs. There's a few specials. Um, and then we pass out candles, and we, we sing Silent Night. And uh, it's, it's a really special thing. Uh, it's tonight at 6 p.m., uh, then there's no Wednesday service, because uh, everything that's going on this week. Uh, water baptism, Sunday, December 31st. Uh, it's following the morning service. And there is a new Sunday school class starting January 7th in Classroom 2. It's called Pivot Into Your Purpose, and it's led by Gina Robot, and that sounds really cool. Uh, please see her for more information. Where's, where's Suzanne at? Oh, hi. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to think of a joke in the meantime. and I'm just kidding. All right, Merry Christmas, everyone. Good morning. Let's look fancy. Okay, we're in Luke today. Uh, the beginning of this is there are shepherds on the hillsides tending their flock. And okay, now we're ready. Then an angel appeared to the appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Luther said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared, and the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and had gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. Amen. Amen. That's the Christmas message. That's the Christmas music can you, or message. Can you say amen? amen. God is so good. We, we encourage you to give your tithes and offerings up front here. We have offering plates. We ask you to do that because we believe that giving to God is an act of worship. So we encourage you to respond if you don't feel like coming up there'll be an offering plate in the back that you can deposit your offering amen how many are ready for christmas how many are glad that it's here tomorrow amen god's good we got more people coming in yet praise god just waiting until everybody gets seated
Together now, let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Remember, it's the Holy Spirit that came upon Mary. Let's believe God. Dear Spirit of God, come upon us now. Touch our hearts. Touch our lives. Encourage. In Jesus' name, we welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise you. We magnify you. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
Christmas gift than the gift of Jesus, not only in the natural form, but in the spirit form. The Lord says today, if you didn't get any gifts, you've been given the ultimate gift. For the Lord says today, just think, every single day you can have a do-over. Every single day you can have a do-over. Every single day you can walk differently with the Spirit of God the gift that Jesus has given us. Praise God. Good work. Can you say amen? We do have some prayer concerns. I want us to lift these needs before the Lord and believe God for God to intervene and touch the people's lives and heal and restore. Can you say amen? We're going to pray for Diane Krause. She's over in nursing home, she needs our prayers. Let's believe God for the healing of her shoulder, her leg that has infection in it. Let's believe God for that. We need to also pray for Brenda this morning that God would heal her and restore her in everywhere. Amen. She's battling cancer. We're going to believe God to heal her. Mary Jerese is at home. We need to lift her up. Her back still needs a lot of prayer. We're believing God to heal her. Amen. Amen. And Lee, way in the back, we need to be praying for him for healing as well. Let's lift these needs before the Lord along with our nation and the nation of Israel. Let's believe God together. And as we do, we'll pray for the offering as well. Will you stand as we lift these needs before the Lord? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for every gift you give us. Certainly the gift of your Son is the biggest gift we could ever receive. And we recognize, Lord, it was a real miracle for him to come from heaven to earth. And we're thankful that we can be the recipients of that miracle. We thank you for the offering this morning. We thank you for gifts that we could give back to you so your kingdom could be extended. We give you praise for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We lift Diane up, heal her, make her whole, Lord. Heal that shoulder, keep her from COVID that's on that floor where she is. We pray for Brenda that you would heal her and make her whole. Heal her from cancer in Jesus' name. We pray for Lee in the back, come upon him right now by your spirit. Do a work in his body, heal and restore. We pray for our nation at this hour that we're living in. We pray for a great outpouring of your spirit. We pray for revival like never before. We pray, Lord, for the leaders of our country that you would turn them around and they would realize they need God, just like all of us need God. We pray, Father, that for the nation of Israel, be with them during this time. Help them, Lord. Protect Israel, Lord. Restore in Jesus' name. And we give you praise. We also thank you for the message this morning. And we ask that, Lord, that you use it to touch our hearts, to do something down deep inside, that we can understand what heart faith is all about. I ask that in the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise God. You know, whenever we have a Sunday before Christmas or even on Christmas a Sunday, we're kind of scattered in our brains. Can you say amen? amen. 
we've been shopping, we're all taken up with everything that's going on, and it's hard sometimes for us to really, really focus on Jesus. We need to focus on the Lord today. Can you say amen? amen? I want you to look up at the screen because we have a title for the message today. It reads this way, let it be to me according to your word. These are the words of Mary, the mother of Jesus. We're going to look at these words later on in the message, and I believe God will speak to your heart as he's already spoken to mine. The passage of Scripture is Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. I'm not going to read those verses all at once. I'm going to read them in piecemeal, a little bit here and a little bit there, and make some comments. Father, thank you for the word. We already prayed that you would move, and so we accept that in Jesus' name. Listen up. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 28 reads this way. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. I know this is not about the birth of Jesus, but there could be no birth of Jesus without what happens in this particular passage that we're, gonna, we're focusing on today. In other words, there had to be a conception before there could be a birth. That is very important for us to understand. I believe as we study this this morning, we're going to see how God wants to speak to you and me about heart faith. Heart faith, will you say that? God wants you and I to have heart faith. And when we think about the time that we're living in, we look at our nation and what's happening. We look at the economy and what's happening. We look at people who are going through hard times. Some of them didn't have enough money to buy Christmas gifts. Other people are sick. Some are despondent. Some are depressed at this time of the year. I want you to know there's a message for you today. A message concerning heart faith. Some of you say, I, I've given up on faith. I've been disappointed too many times. I believe today you're going to understand why we give up. We're going to understand how we can have heart faith because God wants you to have it and he wants me to have it. And remember, nothing is impossible to him. Can you say amen? amen. Anyway, Gabriel already made a long trip, didn't he, from heaven? to see Mary, to talk to her about some important matters. The word favor that we read in the passage means to surround with favor or grace, to honor with blessings. That's a tremendous word to her. That word is to you and me today because the fact is that the Lord surrounds you with his grace and blessings. Can you say amen to that? Let's look further into the story in Luke chapter 1, verse 29 and 30. It says, but when Mary saw Gabriel, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. When Mary saw Gabriel, she was troubled. Let me tell you this. If an angel appeared to you before you came today, you would probably be troubled by the, by the angel visiting you. We don't know how to do that when an angel visits us. And most of us don't have angels visiting us anyway. Can you say amen? But anyway, the word trouble indicates that Mary was very upset, indicates that she was frightened, disturbed, and puzzled by this sudden and unexplained encounter with the angel Gabriel. The story continues in verses 34 to in 35 and 37. Then Mary said to Gabriel, How can this be since I do not know a man? Good question. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who was to be born will be called the Son of God. For at God nothing will be impossible. I want you to say with me the following, For with God nothing will be impossible. Will you say it right now? Yes. With God nothing will be impossible. How many need to hear that today? All right, let's say it again. Okay. For with God, with God, nothing will be impossible. But well, Luke gives us information about how that Mary would become a mother. Mary didn't understand the message of the angel because she would 
have a, how she would have a baby since she did not know a man or have sex with a man. Gabriel provides the answer here and reveals to her that the Holy Spirit would come upon. We would say come upon. Come upon her and the power of God would overshadow her. What does this all mean when we think about it? Because we're going to witness the greatest miracle that has ever happened. The Son of God being born of the Virgin Mary. The greatest miracle of all. Look up here at the phrase. It says, come upon means to overtake, to arrive. Think about that word arrive. The arrival and overtaking of Mary's body miraculously and mysteriously impregnate her. Did you hear that? God's power will overshadow her, creating life in her womb. What does Gabriel mean by overshadow? Well, look up at the screen, if you would, please. It means to envelop or immerse in a shadow. And this is the idea of it. The idea is the presence and power of God would totally fill this young lady like the cloud of Shekinah glory of God that filled the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Wow, what a miracle. Can you say amen? Now, verse 38 is where the verse I'm aiming at today. Notice, if you will, up on the screen. And Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word or rhema. And the Lord departed from her. Before we say anything about that verse, look at the next verse, and then we'll come back to this verse. Next verse, please. Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah penned these words over 700 years before they were fulfilled. This was something that all the Israelite people knew about. They knew this particular verse. They knew that someone was coming, a deliverer, a savior. They knew that the Messiah was coming. When would that happen? So we have the written word here that it would happen, but not when it would happen. Now, as we look back at verse 38, that's when it happened, when the angel Gabriel came to visit Mary. In other words, he gave her a rhema. You say, what does that mean? It means the written word was quickened. Hallelujah. The written word became alive in Mary. Amen. Came alive and she became pregnant. Conception took place. How wonderful that really is when you think about it. That's the power of God. Can you say amen? amen? I wonder what that meant to her. It meant a lot. In fact, you know how she responded right here? She said, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Some of you have received a rhema. God has spoken to you in the area of healing. He's spoken to you in the area of finances. He's spoken to you in the area of, of being an overcomer. But you dismissed it or did not really carry through with it. I want you to know the rhema is always a quickened word. It takes a written word, which is, is a said word. And it gives you the rhema, which is a saying word. Too many people are just depending on the written word without waiting before God, without spending time and before the Holy Spirit. So that word becomes quickened down deep in. And when it becomes quickened down deep in, that's when faith happens. Faith is born in our hearts. In the womb of your spirit, God speaks. And when he speaks, he creates in you faith. Amen. Amen. Look up at the screen, would you please? Faith comes by rhema. Notice, heart faith. That's what God wants. So many of us have head faith. So many of us are confessing head faith. We're not confessing heart faith. There is a difference, by the way. God wants us to understand that faith comes by rhema. Heart faith does not begin with man. It begins with God. I see people struggling to have faith. They're trying so hard to believe. They're trying so hard to see a miracle happen in their life, and they don't realize they need to wait before God, before the Holy Spirit. He will quicken a word of healing to them. He'll quicken a word that would deal with their finances. He will quicken a word with them that they could be victorious and overcomers. But we don't want to take the time, do we? We want something that happens real fast and... Then we can forget about it. 
But notice up at the screen what it says. The only way our hearts can receive heart faith is by God speaking into them. Wow. Again, going back to the written word is the said word. The rhema is the saying word. God takes the scripture and he quickens it to us. And that is the beginning of faith. As I already said, the womb of our spirit receives that just like Mary's womb received the spirit of God that created in her the son of God for the body. He already was the son of God, but he needed a body, okay? Listen very carefully. Rhema is God's spoken word. It is different than the written word. The written word is the whole Bible, but the rhema comes upon a verse in the Bible that you need in your particular circumstances. Whether it be healing, whether it be a financial need, whether it be a word concerning your family for salvation, rhema is a word, a special word that he illuminates and speaks into your heart. Notice if you would, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. We don't have this up on the screen. It says, things which the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, God has revealed them through his spirit. As you prayfully meditate over the written word, God grants the spirit of revelation, Ephesians 1, 17. The eyes of your heart are enlightened. How many remember reading that verse? Do you know? That your heart has spiritual eyes. Yeah. The eyes of your heart are enlightened. In other words, that happens inside of you. And you, you know that you know that you know that God has spoken into your heart. And that's the beginning of faith. What happens is you're reading the word and all of a sudden the verse jumps off the page. When it jumps off the page, it becomes Raymond. It speaks directly to you and where you are with your circumstances. We cannot turn the written word into rhema. People try to. Oh, man, I, I, I believe in confession, but people just have the written word and they keep confessing it over and over. It's like praying with the beads, you know, and another faith. Nothing happens because they haven't got it inside. The Spirit of God will put it inside of you, and when you get it inside, you're going to know that you know that you know that God has spoken down deep inside. Amen? Only God can turn the written word into rhema. We cannot force revelation. Only God can give it. But we can keep missing it by not waiting on God to hear what he says. Let me tell you, prayer is more than speaking to God. How many can say amen? God wants us to have a listening ear so we can hear what he would say to us down deep in our hearts so we can grab hold of it. Jesus lived a supernatural life, and he did it by depending on the Father every day. When you get a chance, read John chapter 5, and notice how many times Jesus says, I speak only what he speaks to me. I do only what I see him doing. Jesus lived by revelation. We must also learn to walk the same way. Now, after we have conception in our heart, of there's something else that's needed. Notice, if you will, up on the screen. The gestation process. You say, gestation process? What are we talking about? Well, you that have mothers know that there was conception and then the next stage was gestation, right? Well, what does gestation really mean? Look up at the screen. The process or period of developing inside the womb between conception and birth. In other words, God wants that faith that he's already created in your heart to grow. How many can say amen? amen? It has to grow. We sometimes forget about the gestation aspect, and we don't really see our faith grow. This is the second thing about heart faith, the gestation process. Now, here you are. God has given you a word. He's spoken the word into your heart. To Raymond. Then one then you begin meditating on it and allowing it to go around and around inside of you, filling every part of your heart. That strengthens faith. That helps your faith to grow. And when you talk about this process, one important word comes to mind, and that is that we need to meditate on the word of God. How many can say amen? amen. 
When you meditate on the Word of God, you start seeing the answer. You start seeing what's happening. I think that Jesus, I mean, rather Mary, when she, after the angel left and she knew she was pregnant, she began to think about holding Jesus even though he wasn't born yet, but that's where she's at. She's meditating on what God has given her. Are you with me? She's seeing herself already breastfeeding him. She sees herself already changing his diaper. She sees herself listening to her, singing to her, loving on her. And when she gets older, walking with her. She begins to see all of that. God wants us to know that we need to really meditate. Conception and then that faith needs to grow. We need to see it. Can you say amen? amen? When we see the answer, it starts to happen down deep inside. It starts growing. Praise God. Amen. You see, the Bible tells us in Luke 2, 19, look at the screen. Mary pondered these things in her heart. That's more than thinking about them. Yeah. She's actually acting it out. She's seeing it. Too many people don't get to that. But you need the, this part of the gestation. You need to see the answer. You need to see you receiving the answer. How many can say amen? amen. Abraham grew strong in his faith. You know why? By meditating on what God said to him. As he meditated on the promises of God, things begin to change in his life. And they'll change in your life too. Because God wants you to have the God kind of faith. He wants you to have heart faith. He wants you to be someone that's not just trying hard to believe and trying hard in faith and only failing and failing and failing. God wants us to hear him. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Now there's something else you need to add to that. Look up at the screen. Add to this process thanksgiving. When you start, Thanksgiving is a big faith word. How many know that? It really is. You get your mind off yourself and you get them on God. You get your mind off your problem. You look at God and you start thanking him that you already have received the answer down deep inside. And you're praising God for that. You're allowing it to happen. You're allowing it to grow inside. And you're saying, boy, oh boy, God's doing something. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I have it, I have it, I have it. In Joshua 6, we see the Israelites giving thanks before Jericho fell down. In John 11, verses 41 through 43, Jesus gave thanks before Lazarus rose from the tomb. Do you remember that? Yes. In Philippians chapter 4, remember verses 6 through 8, we're told to couple thanksgiving with prayers and supplication. Amen. This is real prayer. Real prayer is when you pray and you begin to thank God that he's doing that, what you're asking him to do. That's real prayer. That's not a born prayer. That's real prayer. Then guess what you do? You start confessing. Amen? This is what God wants you to know. You begin to confess what God has spoken to you about. Look what the word confession really means. Confession means to say the same thing. All right, so here you go. You say, boy, I need healing. You start waiting on God. You're waiting before the Holy Spirit. He takes a verse you already know, but he makes it very real down deep inside. And when that happens, you know that something has happened. You know that faith is being born in your heart, heart faith. Can you say amen? Amen. Then what do you do? You start seeing it. You meditate every day on that verse. You meditate on it and you see yourself being healed. If you can't walk very good, you start seeing yourself walking really well. When you say, hey, I had these severe headaches all the time, you start seeing yourself without headaches. Amen. Because you're believing the word that he has quickened in your heart. And that changes you. So what does that mean? Where do you go then? You start thanking him. You start praising him. And then confession is saying the same thing. In other words, God said something to you, and you're saying the same thing he spoke into your heart. And you start saying, I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I know I'm healed. 
Glory to God. But too many times people give up after they get a rhema word. They just give up and they just, ah, I guess it's not going to happen. I'm here to tell you, you have your part. Can you say amen? And when you have your part, God's going to quicken that word to you in such a way that you're probably going to start shouting. You're probably going to start praising God all over the place. You're going to say to your friends, I believe I'm healed. I believe I've been healed. I believe I've been healed. I believe God's meeting my financial need. I believe he's meeting that. I believe my marriage is going to work out. I'm believing it's going to become the kind of marriage that you want. Because you've given me, you've given me a rhema down deep inside my heart that changes me. Now think with me. Too many times the body of Christ never gets this far. Would you agree? We may get the quickened word, but we don't do anything with it. That gestation period is so important from conception to the birth of the miracle. And when you say with it, I want you to know somewhere it's going to happen. Can you say amen? amen? Something's going to change down deep inside of you. Something's going to change that will make you different. Something's going to change that you're going to say, wow, I have a miracle. I don't even see it yet, but I already got it down deep inside. And I'm believing God for it. I'm believing God for it. Now, think with me. I know we're going to celebrate Christmas tomorrow, aren't we? We're going to celebrate his birthday. But I'm telling you, there could be no birthday because there could be no birth without conception. And it's the same way in your life and mine. There has to be conception before there can be a miracle. And then there's a miracle that will take place if you stay with it. Can you say? You know, can I be honest about Thanksgiving? There's a real need in the body of Christ for Thanksgiving. There's a real need in the body of Christ for Thanksgiving. Don't give up on what God has quickened in your heart. Start seeing it. And then start thanking him for it. And then start confessing it. And then you're going to see the miracle that God wants you to see. This is what God put on my heart for this Sunday morning. I'm going to ask you to stand. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah! Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. I know this was a teaching time. But there's so much misunderstanding about faith. I believe there are people here today that have given up on the rhema word. I believe there are people here who say, I've tried and I've tried to believe and nothing's happening. I hope today you understand your part in all of it. Can you say amen? amen. It's heart faith. But it's your heart that he wants to work in. And not only that you receive a rhema, a special quickened word from the written word, but also you begin to see that miracle happening. You begin to thank God for it, and then you start confessing. How many of you could lift your hand today and say, God has spoken to my heart? Lift it high. What I'm going to ask you to do because this process probably isn't going to take place all at once, okay? Gestation doesn't mean it's always instant. Can you say amen? I want you to begin. If you already have a rhema word, come up here. And start seeing, meditate on it. And start thanking God for it. And then start confessing. If you need encouragement, will you come? The altar's open. See, that's an altar right there. That's an altar. Come and let God work in your heart. I know it's Christmas time and we all got plans, but let God work. Will you? Praise God. Father, thank you for the word. I, I obeyed you, Father. You put this on my heart. 
I kind of argued with you about it, but you won. And I've shared what you wanted me to share, Heavenly Father. Now, Lord, may it become real in every heart, may it become real in every life. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. All the team. Oh, wait.